You know, almost on a daily basis, I get asked the question on uh, what are some quick tips and tricks on how to start a healing process with indigestion, acid reflux, GERD, heartburn, like literally almost on a daily basis. So these are some really, really quick, easy uh, strategies to help the healing process begin so much faster than just to leave it alone and take those over the counter, you know, anti and acids, you know, whatever. That's just going to make the problem worse over time, yada, yada, yada. So what are they? Let's go down the rabbit hole. Okay, so we're going to need betaine HCL. We're going to need this really, really cool enzyme called serapeptase. And then we're going to need this herb called rhodiola. How do those things work together and what are they good for? Okay, all right, so the rabbit hole has begun. Let's start with betaine HCL. What is that? Well, basically, it's stomach acid. It's hydrochloric acid. That's what's in our stomach, and it does two very, very important three things. Well, concerning heartburn and acid reflux, <laughs> we're going to focus on two things. It obviously does more than that, but these are the two that we got to focus on. So to, to start the process of not feeling that slushing up burning sensation anymore, we have to close a sphincter muscle. Okay, so our body has this little flap, this little piece of muscle that its sole job is to separate the contents of our stomach from the delicate tissue of our esophagus. And it has to be activated in order to work. And what activates it is that HCL, that betaine HCL. Why does it activate that? Well, in nature, there exists this scale. It's called the pH scale. And, and this little piece of tissue is sensitive to low pHs. So it just so happens that the nature of hydrochloric acid itself is very low on that pH scale. And by its very nature, activates our sphincter muscle. So, you know, like, like over time, if we were to improperly combine certain foods together and Everything has its own unique pH. I'm not going to focus on pH much. I don't even want to say that, say that, that, that phrase in this video. That's, pH can be a video in and of itself, but just understand that hydrochloric acid has a low pH. And it's because of that it allows this muscle to function appropriately. That, that sphincter valve that separates our, the contents of our stomach from our esophagus. Now, when our pH of our stomach slowly starts increasing, that sphincter muscle isn't going to get as strong a prompt to close. So over time, with improper diet, stress, whatever, our sphincter muscle loses its tonicity in the same way like when you're born, when you're first born and you're a baby and like everybody's messing with you, they're putting your, your, your feet near your head and they're like, whoa, this baby is limber. It's like the same thing over time as that kid grows up and he or she doesn't exercise or, 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 or uh, stretch, they, the muscles and the joints lose the tonicity to remain flexible. In the same way, if through diet, ex, uh, through, through, through diet lack of exercising, and in this case, we're talking about the sphincter muscles, so lack of low pH, uh, improper food combinations, instead of having a tight junction, because of non-stimulus, it slowly gets stretched apart. And then when we begin the healing process, which is what we're going to do through this video, start adding that betaine HCL, it's going to start the process of re-stimulation. And if you were to go to the gym now, let's say you're, you're out of the gym and you go to stretch, I mean, are you really going to be limber? How long is it going to take you for you to be able to bend down and touch your toes? I don't know. Each body is different. So depending on the length of time it takes your sphincter muscle to build that tonicity, that's up to you. And it's slightly different on every person. But what I have experienced and have witnessed, over time, it definitely restores its ability to go and separate our contents. Now, in the meantime, moving right along, let's jump ahead to this really cool enzyme called serapeptase. Basically, I really like this enzyme because it works under a broad pH range. So remember, we need a low pH to close the sphincter muscle. Now, it just so happens that enzymes, which just in case you didn't know, are the 
really cool protein superheroes that actually liquefy and digest our food. But stomach acid does not digest our food. It activates, and this is actually the second part of hydrochloric acid. The first part, it closes the, the, the muscle. The second part is it activates our enzymes, the hydrochloric acid. Now, this serapeptase enzyme is actually from a bacteria. It's not native to us, but our body can use it just the same. So what happens is, as our pH gets all screwed up, the natural enzymes in our stomach that our stomach makes don't work so effectively. So we experience longer periods of time for our food to slush up and down as that sphincter muscle slowly struggles to close. Fortunately, we have cool enzymes, and the one in particular that I found to work the absolute best is serapeptase. Now... There's a caveat. If you search the internet for serapeptase, you're going to understand that it's categorized as a systemic enzyme. That's a video in and of itself. However, for our purposes, we want this serapeptase to actually be active in our stomach. Most systemic enzymes are designed not to open in our stomach. They can do some really cool jobs elsewhere in our body, and typically we don't want them in our stomach. Not because it's a bad thing, but because we want them to do something else. Anyway, we want a serapeptase that will open up in our stomach and digest the contents of our stomach, our food, you know, what have you, uh, then and there. And that, this whole process of adding the betaine, HCL, and the serapeptase, just to summarize real quick, just to help you know where I'm going with this, our Sphincter muscle is going to start getting tonicity restored, BT and HCL. Until that tonicity is fully recharged and it can really form a good seal, the serapeptase is going to liqu liquefy our food infinitely faster than if we didn't have it. So the probability of us experiencing stomach acid or the length of uh, <laughs> for us experiencing stomach acid, for us experiencing heartburn, the, the, the length of time is going to be significantly decreased because our food is going to be liquefied so much faster and carry on its route down our elementary canal and then we absorb it, we process it, we, we uh, get, get rid of it, you know. Anyway, so these two things are going to expedite the entire process probably tenfold. Now, moving right along, if we absolutely don't want to have to continue taking serapeptase our whole life or continue taking betaine HCL our whole life. We have to do something at, at, a, at a, in a deeper level. This involves our psychology. This involves our emotions. Um, this involves our perception. Okay, so basically life is stressful. Duh. <laughs> the, the caveat is we cannot allow... Let me repeat that. We cannot allow the stressors of our life to affect our psychology in a negative way. We can allow it to affect it in a positive way, but we cannot allow it to, the, the vicissitudes of life, we cannot allow that in a negative way to affect our psychology. Why? Well, well, okay, you know what? It's natural to become upset, but here's, here's, here's the, real, the issue. We can't allow it to affect us when we eat. That's the caveat. The reason for that is because our body is designed to uh, appropriately respond to stress. Okay, It does that with a super magical, powerful chemical called um, cortisol. Cortisol is our stress hormone. And when it is on, when it is active in our body, it allows us to do some really, really cool things. It allows us to get stuff done. When we're under pressure, man, I need to get these reports done. I need to do whatever. I need to do good on this test. Oh, man, I need—I forgot my kids. Let me drive the fastest way. Well, under the speed limit. Anyway, you see where I'm going with that. In order for cortisol to work, it siphons off energy from other parts of our body. And it, it delivers that energy to our brain, to our vascular system, and to our muscles to get stuff done. Where it takes the energy away from is like our immune system and our digestive system as a whole. So if you're stressed out, okay, and this stress is causing negativity, negative emotions, your 
cortisol levels are going to spike. And if you happen to eat food during a spiked cortisol series of blood changes going on in your body, you're not going to be able to digest your food. And this is the beginning process of blocking the integrity of that sphincter muscle to close appropriately on its own. So even if you have, you know, that betaine HCL, it is going to help you while you're stressed. Yes, it will. The serapeptase is going to help you while you're stressed. Yes, it will. However, the, the idea is for you to rebuild the strength, the integrity, the vigor to digest your food on, uh, just with the, the, the faculties you have innately. We don't want to take these uh, supplements for the rest of our lives. That's not the goal. The goal is to rebuild your body's ability. And we can do that through this technique, okay? Before you eat any food, pray. Or before you eat any food, meditate. Anything you can do to center yourself. And I know it might sound like a cliche to do that, but I have witnessed absolute miracles, which is doing simple things, adding these simple, you know, supplements for short periods of time, definite revolutions in how the body can uh, heal itself. Now, there's a really, really cool herb <laughs> called rhodiola. And until we can master our mind, master our thoughts, master our emotions, Rhodiola is excellent at helping us lower our cortisol levels. And this is where we can get the big boost. This is like the trifecta, the betaine HCL, the serapeptase, the rhodiola, to begin straightening out our body and allowing it to produce the necessary digestive enzymes and the necessary acids we need. The rhodiola is super effective at lowering our cortisol levels. So even if, you know... If, you know, we, we can't afford all three of them at once, if we can just get one at any given time, it's going to begin the healing process. Even if we're stressed out, we can only afford the rhodiola. It's going to lower our cortisol levels around the time that we need to eat. And um, with lower cortisol levels, our ability to produce more hydrochloric acid than we would have and we weren't able to do before is going to increase. And that alone is going to start re-stretching and retonifying that sphincter muscle. Um, so whatever you can start with first, it's great. I like to use all three of them for fast results. Now, there's a little caveat over here in this corner. If you like apple cider vinegar, you can use that instead of the betaine HCL. The only difference is the apple cider vinegar takes longer because it's, it's not as potent as the betaine HCL. Um, and that, some people actually like the taste of vinegar. Are, are you one of them? <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. Um, but you could definitely use like two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar before a meal. And that pretty much works. The other stuff, uh, the other supplements, just use what's recommended on, on the bottle. Uh, or the package that you, that whatever company you choose to get it from. Um, the betaine HCL, you need to take it differently than other ones. Start with the recommended dosage. But on this one, you need to play with it a little bit because it depends on the food that you eat. That kind of dictates how much betaine HCL you should take. So as I said earlier, each all natural things on this earth has its own respective pH. If you happen to eat something that has a really high pH, but you have to digest it and have it, in order to do that, it's got to have a really low pH. Um, you might have to add more betaine HCL. And you just experiment with your own body. Your body will tell you when it's enough. Take the recommended uh, serving amount on the bottle. If you don't feel anything, if it doesn't really help, uh, the next time you eat, take twice that amount. If you don't feel anything, then the next time you eat, take three times that amount. You know, just play with it and your body will tell you when, when it's enough. Now, finally, if you are on proton pump inhibitors, if you live on antacids, uh, you know, like Tums or Prilosec, OTC, you don't want to stop taking those things abruptly. You want to stay on them and then slowly introduce this new protocol, the trifecta, the rhodiola, the serapeptase, and the betaine HCL. Slowly introduce it, and as you increase the, the quantity of these natural supplements, you can slowly decrease the quantity of the unnatural over-the-counter uh, 
stuff that you may be taking in your life or taking to help digest your food. That's basically it. This is uh, like a home run, slam dunk, you know, definite Super Bowl win. These three things, they work so good and well together. Anyway, I wish you all the luck and uh, cheers.